What we're going to be looking at today is finding the specific heat capacity of a substance from a temperature time graph. Now, in order to do this, we're going to imagine the following situation. We have a metal block over here and we've done an electrical experiment. So we have heated this up with a heater. So we have heated this block up and we've done that with an electrical circuit. We've taken certain measurements. So let's say that our measurements are as follows. So our current during the heating period, let's, let's keep things simple. So let's say that was two amps. And uh, let's say that our voltage was six volts. What we have additionally done is plotted a graph of temperature against time. So every few, let's say every 10 seconds or so, we've taken a reading of the temperature of the block and we have plotted this on a graph. And we can see the graph over here. Now, the question is, how can we use this graph to figure out the specific heat capacity of the block? Okay, so how do we determine the specific heat capacity of the block? The first step would be to write down our equation for specific heat capacity. So we know that the change in energy, let's call that delta E, that's simply going to equal MC times our change in temperature delta theta. If you remember though, energy is power times time. So this is just a general equation, power multiplied by time. This is what energy is. And because this is the change in energy, I'm just going to add a little delta over here, the uh, power times the change in time. Normally we don't write this delta because we just assume that at some point t is equal to zero, such as the start of this graph. But just for this example, I'm going to write this and going to see why that is the case in a minute. Okay, so power times time is equal to mc delta theta. Remember power from GCSC, electrical power is just voltage times current. So I can just say that this is equal to V times I times delta T. Oop, what's happened here? Times delta T is equal to MC delta theta. Okay, now notice that if I was to just put the delta T onto the other side, what I'm going to get is that V times I is going to equal MC delta theta over delta T. Hang on a minute. Change in temperature over change in time. Look at that. This is actually equal to the gradient of this graph because remember the gradient is equal to change in y over change in x essentially rise over run so this is actually equal to change in temperature over change in time so i can just write this as the gradient of uh, of this graph so we can just say that v times i is equal to mc times the gradient. I'm going to call that just grad. Okay, we can just rearrange for the specific heat capacity C as our final step. So C will just be equal to V times I divided by the mass times the gradient. Calculating the gradient, just by looking at the graph, our change in uh, change in temperature is just 25 degrees. So our gradient is going to be 25 divided by 700 seconds. So in this case, our gradient will be 0.0357. Okay, well, we can start plugging in some numbers for calculating the 
specific heat capacity. So C is going to be V times I. Now, if you if you remember at the start of the question, I gave you some values for V and I. So V is six and I is equal to two. So this is going to be equal to six times two divided by the mass of the block, which as we can see here is two kilograms. So it's going to be divided by two multiplied by the gradient, which is 0 0.0357. Now, if we put that into our scientific calculator, we're going to get a answer for the specific heat capacity. So let's do that. And uh, we're going to get a specific heat capacity of 168 which is our final answer and let's not forget to add in the unit so this is the specific heat capacity so the um, SI units for this are joules per kilogram per Kelvin okay folks thank you very much as always if there are any questions feel free to drop a comment down below